If you want to start booking paid photography jobs, but don't have a dollar to spend on paid marketing or social media ads, then this is definitely the video series for you. Welcome back to our video series, 10 free marketing tactics for photographers. This series is all about the different ways that you can get the attention of potential clients, even if you're still really early on in your photography business. But before we jump into this week's content, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers to build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So a couple of weeks ago, we posted part seven in this series where we talked all about winning over your personal network basically using social media, but also using some good old fashioned in-person networking. This week, we are gonna continue on that theme by talking about how reaching out directly to people in your network can be a great way to book paid jobs, especially as a new wedding photographer. But a lot of what we are gonna be talking about today is building on last week's video, so be sure to go and check that out first. Now, as you probably noticed from the title of this video, we are gonna be talking today about direct outreach. Now, if you read the words direct outreach and the first thing that popped in your head was cold calling strangers and begging them to hire you, then do not worry, that is absolutely not what this video is about. Yeah. Instead, we are taking a direct outreach approach and we're applying it to the network marketing strategies that we talked about last week. So in other words, you are going to be directly reaching out to your friends and family, to people who already know you, who already trust you, and are potentially looking for a photographer and just reminding them that you are available. But if that still sounds scary, don't worry. We're gonna talk about how you can do that without seeming desperate or spammy or anything. So let's dive right in. Um, now, the disclaimer that we do want to make at the start of this section is that if you are a wedding photographer, this direct outreach method is just, frankly, it's going to work better if you are at an age and stage of life where a lot of people that you know are in the stage of life where they're getting engaged and getting married. And so for us, we were in our early 20s as we were starting our business and in the one to $3,000 range, we kind of found a lot of success as people from our own personal network were graduating from college and getting married. Yeah. Now that we are in our late 20s, many of our friends are still in that stage. They're in their late 20s and early 30s, and they are in that stage of life where they are making good money. And we still have friends hiring us, even though our coverage is in the like eight to $11,000 range. But no matter what age and stage of life you are in, this strategy can still work. And it's honestly about as simple as can be since social media networks basically do half the work for you. These networks, especially Facebook and Instagram, are really all about doing whatever they can to put content in front of you that is both relevant to you and personalized to sort of your, uh, your own network, right? So that's how they pe keep people engaged on their platforms, which is essentially how they make money. Yeah, so if a friend or an acquaintance of yours, you know, even if it's someone who you don't really know very well or you haven't spoken to in a couple of years, gets engaged and they post a photo to Facebook or Instagram, that like slew of like likes, comments, hearts, that always just drives those kind of posts right to the very top of your feed. So Meta has done all of your market research for you. And when we would see a, you know, oh my gosh, we just got engaged post on our feed, we would basically just send a really simple message and begin a conversation from there. And we're gonna to get to that message later in this video. But since we would usually reach out to, the, to that person within a day or two of them announcing that they got engaged, what we found is we were grabbing their attention and letting them know that we're wedding photographers literally months before they even started venue shopping and booked a venue, which means we were by far the first photographer that they came into contact with. And since we were also using the strategies we talked about last week, once we had reached out, they were suddenly more aware of us as we posted our work week after week because of that first conversation that we initiated. Yeah, this helped us to achieve what's called top of mind awareness. Mm -hmm. This is just a business term that essentially means that when it did come time for people to book a photographer, we were the first people that popped into their heads. We were basically at the top of their mind when that time came. And, um, <laughs> Just explain it. <laughs> and uh, this top of mind awareness many times translated into basically when they were ready, they would reach back out to us and we would eventually book their wedding. 
But just reaching out again, just to kind of say this again, just reaching out once when they got engaged, that's not enough to keep you top of mind for the months and months between, you know, on average, it's something like two months after someone gets engaged before they start wedding planning and another one to two months before they book a photographer. So right, one conversation three months ago is not gonna book you a wedding. It's those consistent posting and strategies that we talked about last week that'll make them feel like, oh my gosh, ever since Hunter and Sarah reached out, I just can't stop seeing their work everywhere. Yeah, huge corporations will pay literally millions of dollars a month to have this kind of top of mind awareness with their ideal client and you can just get it for free. So for all the portrait photographers out there, we have not forgotten about you. Do not worry. Uh, this strategy works very similar, but just a little bit different and maybe a little bit more creative since um, obviously a wedding and an engagement is a very discreet thing. For most people, it happens once and it's a really big deal. Now, if you're not shooting weddings, again, the strategy can still work for you. Yeah, for example, you know, if the summer is coming to end, coming to an end as it is right now, you want to encourage and you want to encourage like a big push in your senior photos, you'd probably reach out directly to any, you know, rising high school seniors or even better, the parents of a rising high school senior uh, who you know, even if the connection's like pretty loose, like a friend of a friend or someone a you friend of your parents or, yeah. you know, maybe someone you... A loose connection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just someone you haven't spoken to in quite a while. Totally fine. And... Again, if this seems a little bit too like self-promotion, too spammy for you, let me sort of shift your paradigm a little bit, right? Think about it this way. Imagine for a moment that you are that high school senior's parents. Now, that high school senior's parent. Now, um, your child is, you know, getting ready to start their last year in high school. They probably have a million things going on, right? You know, maybe they have sports or extracurriculars. Maybe they are touring and applying for colleges, or maybe they're hearing back and figuring out what they're going to do after high school. Um, maybe they just got their driver's license, right? There's like a million things that could be going on right now. Yeah. And if senior photos are even on your to-do list, they've very likely fallen like all the way to the bottom of that list. So when suddenly an old friend reaches out and politely lets you know that they could just take care of it for you, that's not spam, that's a service. You know, in all likelihood, you have just saved them hours of time and energy and not actually bothered them. You've just saved them that time. Yeah. Now, and uh, this same sort of thought and mentality applies when someone maybe announces that they're expecting, if you're a maternity or newborn photographer, and if you love shooting family sessions, then you don't even need to wait for some announcement or wait for a certain time of life. You can literally just reach out to people who you think might not have had family photos in a while and just let them know about what you're offering and just politely see if they're interested in hiring you. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's just like pause here <laughs> for a second. I know you're probably thinking like, sure, this might be an effective strategy, but won't it just make me seem spammy to all my friends and family? And the answer to that question really depends entirely on how you are reaching out to people. If you do this wrong, yes, it will make you feel very spammy and annoying and your friends don't want to talk to you. But so like, for example, if you see someone get engaged and the first thing you do is immediately, you know, DM them with this long unsolicited elevator speech about why you're the best photographer around and send them, you know, your entire pricing sheet, then like not only will they probably ignore that message, but they're probably gonna be like, ooh, block, unfriend, like this person is super spammy, right? But that's not what we're recommending. Yeah, no, that's not a hun that's not what Hunter and I do. So what we do when we see a friend of ours get engaged on social media, we actually just send them a private message with a personal and genuine congratulations. You know, we relate to them regarding our own engagement. We tell them about you know how much they have looked forward to uh, during this like season of engagement. But here's the key: what we don't do is try to pretend like we're not gonna talk to them about wedding photography and then sort of like bait and switch a few messages in, right? Like that that feels really disingenuous. And if you have ever experienced this, Sarah and I have both had this experience where an old friend from high school reaches out to us, is like, oh, hey, how you doing? We catch up for a little bit and then like five messages in, they basically try to recruit you to their multi-level marketing scheme. How would you like to be your own boss? Yeah, like if you've ever experienced that, you know how disingenuous it feels to think someone is interested in your life and then suddenly bait and switch, they're really just trying to get something from you. Yeah. That's also not what we're recommending. Yeah, so... What we are recommending is right from the first message that we send, we make sure that they know about our experience in the wedding industry and we invite them to reach out if we can help them in any way, whether photography related or even just with more like general wedding questions. And when we tell them that they can reach out, we 
actually mean it. Yeah. So like, yes, of course, we hope they reach back out to us and ask us about wedding photography. But we've also literally helped friends who get engaged. We send them this DM and then maybe we're already booked on their wedding or we're outside of their budget. Like we still genuinely help them. We recommend venues in the area that are kind of match what they're looking for. Or we've even helped them find photographers who are in their budget or available for their date. Right. Like we reach out to them very candidly about our services, but also in a way that's genuine and polite and it doesn't feel like spam, right? It feels more like just an old friend reaching out and saying, hey, congratulations, enjoy the season of life, and by the way, please let us know if we can help. Yeah, and it goes without saying that this method works just as well or even better in person. Like mm -hmm. if you have a close friend or a coworker who you see in person, they get engaged or they have a graduating senior or you're like, Fall's coming up. You want some family photos? Like this same method can be used to put yourself on their radar and maybe just book a session or a wedding with them once they're ready and looking for a photographer. You just have to be willing to talk about it in person. Yeah. Refer back to last week. Um, so we candidly don't have any sort of real world results for this method when it comes to portrait sessions because we actually specialized in just weddings and engagements like super early in our career. But with weddings, we definitely have some results that we can look back on. Yeah. If you saw our last video, then you know that we shared that in our first five years as wedding photographers, we booked 40 weddings worth just shy of like $100,000 from our personal network. And of those 40 weddings and that $100,000, a full 25% was from this direct outreach method. You know, those that's 10 weddings worth $25,000 who may or may not have eventually booked us had we not been the first ones to reach out to them. And all it took was just like a quick DM on Facebook or Instagram from us. So when we were preparing for this video, we actually looked back at those 10 couples and we realized, yeah, like some of them were really close friends of ours who, who we just immediately and excitedly began discussing wedding photography with, like right when they got engaged. But others were like friends of friends or acquaintances or people we hadn't spoken to in years. And of course, in addition to the 10 we did book, there were probably close to 30 or 40 who we saw they got engaged, we DM them on Facebook or on Instagram and literally never heard back. Or maybe they very politely thanked us and then never talked to us again. And that's totally fine because if we had to send 40 DMs to book $25,000 worth of jobs, that still feels like a really good return on our time. And again, all of this was free, right? Yeah, but that is it for us for today. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, we really do hope that these videos are helping you as you guys set up the marketing in your business. Now, um, we are gonna be back at you next week with a new marketing hack or some other standalone video. We've been playing with a little bit more of the sort of one-off videos. Yeah. Um, but either way, make sure you like and subscribe so that you are the first to know when we post new content. If you haven't already, we really, really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. Uh, in this group, we are just building a free community of other photographers who are building their photography businesses and just helping each other out along the way. And of course, if you found this video helpful or if you have comments, suggestions, whatever, feel free to comment below. But thanks guys. We'll see you next week.